so generally people see optimism as kind of a, a temperament sunny view and i think there is some of that and i have a natural amount of it but over time i've actually become even more optimistic than my general tendency deliberately it's kind of like a learned optimism and i think the reason we should be as optimistic as we can is because it is how we make really good things good complicated things so it's hard enough well, I mean, it's very hard to make good, complicated things work because generally there's more ways things can fail than they can succeed. And it's very unlikely that we're going to make something really good that's complicated inadvertently. They're hard to do, so we have to kind of see it and believe that it can be done. And that is where the optimism comes in, is envisioning something and then believing that you could make it real. Because when we look back on history, and that's where a lot of my optimism comes, we realize that most of the things that we have now have been made by people who are optimistically viewing that it was possible to make them and believe that they were going to make them and could imagine them. So I think of it as a work of imagination where you kind of imagine a good scenario, which is harder to do than imagining a scenario where it fails or collapses. It is much easier to imagine how things break than it is to see how they work. And that's why entrepreneurs and all the others are rightly lauded because they're going against that grain. It's, it is hard to imagine how we could have this thing that seems like it is improbable. And most things that work are improbable. That's the definition from the Santa Fe complexity theory is that things breaking down is the probable. Mm-hmm. Complicated things working are improbable by definition. And so you're against the improbable. And that work of imagining the improbable and having the improbable succeed and believing it can is optimism, which means that the optimists are the ones who shape our future. So I'd like to give a little story of like a car. And you need to have brakes on the car to steer the car. Yes. Yeah. I'm with you so far. <laughs> but the engine is actually the more important element. And so there are people and there are, there are organizations and there are methods that are going to be doing the braking. And I think they're essential. I want brakes in the car. But I just feel that the brake can overwhelm and cause stagnation and that we also want to remember to focus on making the engine even stronger. Mm -hmm. So I emphasize the engine. So I want to take a closer look at the engine. So, <laughs> so if things breaking down uh -huh. are the probable, and there are many yeah. more ways things can right. go wrong than they can go right, right. If I'm hearing you correctly, and maybe also bringing in some of my own position, mm -hmm. it would be that active optimism is probably more valuable than passive optimism. In the sense that yes, yes. the belief that you can make things right. turn out all right, as right. opposed to the belief that things will turn out all right. right. And therefore, I can go about my day and not concern myself with worries about A, B, C, D, E, all yeah. the way through Z. And I'm curious if you suddenly had the Kevin Kelly Institute for Active Optimists. Mm -hmm. <laughs> How you would cultivate this or mm. maybe encourage it in more people? Because I do see optimists who are not panicked, not necessarily paranoid, but they are very interested and excited and feel some moral obligation to focus on solving really high leverage problems or creating new mm. technologies. I also see techno optimists who are right. like, well, if A, B, and C gets bad enough, if the temperature of the earth gets to X, Y, and Z, then we'll have these technologies and all be fine. And if this happens, then that'll all be fine. And you know, people thought oil was going to run out by this year, yeah. but they didn't factor in that as the number of barrels per year produced mm -hmm. went down, the price would go up, and then all these other technologies like fracking became viable, and voila, no problem. Mm -hmm. I view those camps as somewhat different. And I'm just wondering if you have yeah. any perspectives on that. I love your distinction between 
passive optimism and active. I think that's brilliant and right on. And, but the reality is, is that you can't be active about everything. You have to kind of select totally. and choose. And so there is a sense in which, okay, there is a greater than zero chance that the Earth could be impacted by an asteroid. Right. And it would be really devastating. Among the most devastating things that could ever happen to this planet, far beyond even what climate change could sure. do. It would definitely change the climate. Exactly. <laughs> and very fast. So it's really good that there is now a group of people who are thinking about that. And there's you know, the B1612 Foundation, which is just tracking all the asteroids. What was it called? B1612, after the Little Prince. <laughs> okay. Right? Got it. <laughs> and it's a viable thing that they've been, they've been behind all the tracking of all the asteroids and, and kind of upping that. And then, you know, recently we just actually sent something that hit the asteroid and deflected, deflected it. it. So that's the first cosmic impact we really had, you know, in the cosmos. Pretty but, wild to think. A bunch yes. of monkeys on a spinning rock. Exactly right. Figured but, out how to deflect asteroids. So, so it's good that there is a small group of people, but we don't need to, to have that be our concern for making national policy every year. I mean, we're not, mm -hmm. that probability is so low sure. that it shouldn't really be a factor in us making our decisions about what we're going to do yes. this year. So that's passive in that sense. I mean, we, I can be passive about because there is another group of people that is active. And you know that a group is right. active. Right. So one of the major things for me was the more I thought about the future, the more I became interested in history. And the more I read history, the more the reality of progress became. And I think just acknowledging the reality of progress would go a large, huge step in helping our optimism.